Welcome! In today's little video has been inspired by Martin Liedke and Philip Yerzinen. Sometimes I don't have anything in mind and I watch a couple videos and boom! Ideas begin to flow. And I'm just going to build on some of the ideas that they shared. And as I sometimes do, I've been looking at a bunch of stuff. And here I'm kind of at the end, and I'm going to try to reverse engineer this exploration that I just took to share with you. So here, since we are here, let's just have a look at this Victoria Tower the Parliament Building in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Almost a 200-foot tower was constructed from 1859 to 1866. Seven years, merely seven years, beginning in 1859. Now this was a little surprise to me. I've never seen this beautiful building before and it came at the end of my research. Of course it was destroyed during the great fire of whatever. Much too glorious to explain to future generations. But here we are looking at it now. So, let's see if I can retrace my steps here. I was originally watching this video by Martin. Excellent video. The Sinister Pied Piper Effect of World War II. If you have not resubscribed to Martin's channel, here it is. And he was sharing a historical narrative of the evacuees of Britain during World War II, especially children. Now we have talked about orphans introducing waves of populations to these city centers that seem to be abandoned. And where do all these orphans come from? And where do all of the populations come from. And here in this Philip Druzinin video called Survival Locations and From Where Did the Replacement People Come From, Philip was sharing the idea that perhaps it was a breeding program. And I've mentioned in the past that the World's Fair photos that we've looked at appear to be the introduction of a population, very possibly coming from the inside of these buildings or underground. And I won't dismiss a breeding program, even in some of our oldest stories, such as the Bible and the Sumerian texts, we see breeding, and God taking a rib from Adam and creating Eve and really seeming like a metaphor for something more scientific as we would understand today. And I don't know, as always, I'm only asking some questions. And today between Martin and Philip we'll consider breeding and also relocating. The evacuation of civilians in Britain during the Second World War was designed to protect people, especially children, from the risk associated with aerial bombing of cities. Operation Pied Piper, and now if you remember the story of Pied Piper, the story of this man luring children out of a town with a flute. Originally, he was commissioned to lure the rats out of the town, and when he was not paid his full sum, 
he used his same magic to lure the children out of the town. And so much wisdom encoded in these old fables. And are they really fables? Seeming to date back to the 1300s, according to the narrative. But going back to this evacuation, and originally they'd estimated they would move 80% of the children, and they were only able to move half of all school-aged children due to the refusal of central government to spend large sums on preparation, which reduced the effectiveness of the plan. Regardless, over three million people were evacuated. Three million people. I mean, what a mess, and who would willingly agree to this? Having their children pulled out of their arms? I I would just assume families would escape a government that would impose such a suggestion. But no. They tell us three million people were moved. And here's a little look. Child evacuees from Bristol arriving at Brent in 1940. And just really seeming to have a good old time. Not seeming like they have been yanked from their families. Seeming like they are arriving somewhere, but I don't know. And here's the Merchants Hill School. It was an evacuation camp in 1944. So here's where a lot of these children ended up. Really interesting. And it looks like they're still awaiting their meals. Maybe they're up here on the table and very unpleasant seeming situation and furthermore evacuation centers were also set up by the foster parent plan for children affected by war later renamed plan international one american school was sponsored by the fpp with each child being financially supported by an American citizen. The Children Overseas Reception Board approved 24,000 children for evacuation overseas. So here you go. Now beginning to ship overseas. 1,500 children were evacuated to Canada. Some to Australia, South Africa, New Zealand. So here you go. Here is the introduction to a population populating all of these places that really don't fit the narrative and where do these people come from and here it is just one example this is just one little example of creating a situation the fear and then the solution well here is the solution but really this is just the story and I don't think that the story would be as we're told. But nevertheless, a sliver of the truth, at the very least, being in this story. The second evacuation started during and after the fall of France in 1940. Around 100,000 children were evacuated. Goods as well as people were evacuated. Organizations or departments departed the city. Art treasures were sent to distant storage. The Bank of England moved to the small town of Overton, Hampshire, and they moved over 2,000 tons of gold to the vaults of the Bank of Canada in Ottawa. So here they move 2,000 tons of gold to Canada along with children. So that's when I jumped over to this next page and wanted to have a little look at the timeline of Ottawa history. And really, according to them, dating back to 1610, 
but when we read all of this, really just seeming like a big joke, and I'm not going to get into it, but pretty ridiculous. And here with a population in 1881 of 25,000, 1912, the Union Station opens, and now we find ourselves back to this 1916 Victoria Tower burned down and this was very important in the mid 1800s 1859 to 1866 once again and so here you go you know a little 25,000 person town needing to build something like this completely ridiculous and did they move 2500 tons of gold to this city or inherit much more and simply needing to populate this city and seizing children from other countries in the name of war and protection and here you have a little look at the occupants at the base of this castle here you go less than a dozen people for this monstrosity one horse little buggy and this is just absolutely mind-blowing and completely ridiculous and you know it just gets me to think about the settling and whether it's a relocating or whether it's breeding either way with relocating shortly thereafter you have breeding so either way you need to move a small group to an area and you only need to convince this first group of the story and if they're children well they'll believe anything and then all future generations are on board actually very simple to create a history a false history and one of my favorite examples of the possible settling of an area post reset is the Salt Lake City story about the Mormons and Utah the first permanent settlement to date marked by the arrival of the Mormons was in July of 1847 1847 four days after arriving they began construction of this temple and this one and this tabernacle four days after arriving to the valley so they arrive in 1847 a handful of people mostly men some women and children and in 1890 40 years later this is a little glimpse of what they have created in 40 years said to have trekked across the country with oxen and wagon and in 40 years a complete build-out of the city really remarkable and unbelievable trolley cars and really besides wearing suits a very primitive people seeming to be walking around a futuristic city considering their needs at this time and here's another little look in 1912 and if you've been to Salt Lake City it doesn't look much different and in 1890 I'm sure it looked exactly like this these are not buildings that you just throw up in a few years and this city is clearly much older than the story we're given and here's one of my favorite buildings the government building 1894 so again 40 years after the arrival of the Mormons 
you have this city and buildings like this. Buildings like the temple and completely unnecessary considering the narrative that we're given. And very strange, these photos always having a handful of children and some sort of guardian with them. Similar to this photo that I featured in my last video. Really, really strange. And I think with all of us putting our heads together, things are starting to make a little bit more sense. But yet we have much more to discover. And then of course there's the Native American history. And I always get comments asking how the Native Americans fit into this. And of course I wonder myself. But if you remember in my last video where I featured many of these Cherokee mansions in the south, such as this Chief Van House being the first brick residence in the Cherokee Nation, really lends to a different story about the Native Americans than anything I've ever been told. This was really fascinating that the Cherokee were a mansion building people. And then there was a treaty and the Trail of Tears and they were forced to relocate. So here we go again. A forcing of relocation. And I'm just not sure. I don't know if perhaps Native Americans could be remnants of the prior people that existed here. And after the reset, they only rehabbed these old properties. And you would have clothing and everything you would need after a reset, if a building was still standing. And many were. Entire cities were clearly still here. And what we see is a relocating to interesting sites. All of the reservations seem to be used in the same way that national parks are used. To keep a tight control of an area and very often to keep people out. And lastly, I just wanted to finish up with this map again. This map of the North Pole and a comment that Lee made. Lee of the Flat Earth British sub channel. And he told me that my last video made him realize perhaps what caused resets. And as I had mentioned, this rock here, this black rock in the center of this landmass, was said to have waters flowing inwards. And if a boat got stuck in here, it would get sucked into a whirlpool. And if this was a magnetic rock, and water was flowing at its base, then it could potentially create a charge. And if enough water flows, eventually the charge could reach such a high capacity that some sort of electromagnetic reset could take place and send ripples throughout this entire plane. And I'm not sure. We'll have to see what Lee has to say in the coming days. But I just wanted to share all that and I hope it made some kind of sense. Please let me know what you think. Again, this research belongs to all of us. And together, I think we will discover the truth. So thank you so much for joining me today. And do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.